All right, so let's get started by talking about mixing water in concrete. Very basic slide, PowerPoint presentation. People usually focus on water whenever uh, you're talking about adding too much to the mix, the concrete mix. But however, water is key to concrete. People don't understand that it takes roughly from point. 2a to you know 0 0.32 water cement ratio to hydrate the cement particles without water you cannot hydrate the cement the cement does not get hard it just stays there the rock the sand some the cement that all you know never gets hard or anything because you don't have any water so water is key so as you can see here over in the very far left side, the water and the cement are, when they're initially mixed, those little circle circles are cement grains, and the water is mixing with them, and eventually there's a very small amount of reaction. That reaction occurs on the surface of those cement particles, and over time, you start seeing hydration products forming. And those hydration products they keep forming and forming and forming and eventually it causes an initial set and then it really speeds up and it'll cause final set and hydration continuously occurs until there are either no more hydrated cement grains or no more unhydrated cement grains to hydrate or there's not enough water usually it's, there's not enough water in the concrete believe it or not Roman concrete is still being hydrated to this day so over time concrete continues to get stronger and stronger believe it or not as long as there's not a durability issue or something so if you look at concrete today at 28 days and you measure it and say it's 4,000 psi 10 years from now it may be 8 to 12,000 psi again that's just a general number the important is to realize water is critical to concrete it's critical through hydration how it works what's water is also critical in the workability of concrete and how admixtures work together in fresh concrete to to to, to you know to build and uh, to pour and you know consolidate and and just you know build a structure out of and then water is key for that structure whenever after that concrete gets hard the actual strength behind it so Abrams law sometimes uh, has been referred to it's actually called the water to cement ratio or water to cementitious material ratio because you use fly ash and other things so it's important to realize when you see w slash c that or w slash cm that's referring to the water to cement ratio so typically you don't want to go anything lower than 0.28 because that's whenever hydration doesn't occur i've seen it where it's even up to 0.32 uh, for some cements it really just doesn't react or very little reaction um, takes place and then however you get really above about a 0 .57, 0 0.60 you start really having cracking issues whether it's plastic shrinkage or drying shrinkage uh, there's just so much water in that mix that over time um, you know those particle those cement particles are spread out so far it's hard for those cement particles the products to interconnect and um, become strong and nice and durable so there's a lot of pores within that 0 0.60 and the water cement ratio is a major major correlation to strength so probably one of the number one reasons you get strength is 
the water to cement ratio. So how much water do you have compared to how much cement? And it's by weight. Okay? By mass. By weight. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're in U.S. units, so we can you know, go by weight. And so it's the amount of water and weight to amount of cement. So if you have 250 pounds of water and you have 500 pounds of cement, that will equal what? 0 0.50. So water cement ratio of 0 0.50. That's what that is. 250 pounds of water to 500 pounds of of a cement. So that's just kind of an example. Obviously, you can get a 0.50 for you know. Um, you can get that you know, 0 0.50 lots of different ways. That's just one example is 250 pounds of water to 500 pounds of cement. Um, a lot of mixed designs, they change. So, you know, it's important to realize that. But what we've found over time is the water cement ratio plays a huge deal in strengths. And what I'm saying is, is sometimes even if you have higher amounts of cement, a lot of times that because you're adding more water that if you have the same amount of water cement ratio at 500 pounds and at 700 pounds of cement that they may actually have very similar strengths so don't be surprised you know you may see a little bit of earlier kickoff because of the heat generation but really in fact the water cement ratio um, is the one that's really playing the big the, the the big part and you can actually see that when you're in labs um, and you can actually you know kind of remove some of that heat um, so anyways let's get back to it water cement ratio relationship this is kind of something uh, Hoover uh, kinda came up with and it's in the PCA book and it's a really good correlation if you don't have anything offhand and you don't have any past experience with your materials in your area this is a great little table to kind of help you get started where you have your water cement or you have your compressive strength um, you know from 2000 all the way up to 7000 and then you have air and trained or non air and trained concrete remember if you are air and trained you know stagnant air is very weak and so it takes a little bit more to get to you know to get to the same thing so you can see here you might be at 7000 psi at a 0.33 but with air and train concrete you may be at 6000 at a 0.32 so they're almost the same water cement ratios but there's about a thousand psi difference depending on if it's air and trained or non air and trained so um, there is a step down but there's a really core cool correlation between water cement ratio and strength and so these are decent numbers you won't they won't be exact for your materials in your area but they are you know fairly close so when we talk about the job site and water addition this is a really cool little um, you know thought we'll, we'll, uh, for every one gallon which is about which is roughly you know a little over eight pounds of water that's added you know per cubic yard it's supposed to increase your slump by an inch you know rough rough rule of thumb but however it lowers your compressive strength by at least 200 to 500 psi I've seen 500 in many cases um, it may also increase your shrinkage by 10%. It may reduce your free thaw durability. Can also increase um, resistance to de-icing salts and easier to, to to scale the concrete surface scaling of the concrete. You also may have an increase of cracking, especially if you get above a certain water to cement ratio and, and your pace gets too high. Um, a lot of times, especially if you're, like I said, your paste content, your water cement ratio gets too high, you may get some dusting. Um, a lot of times, I'll even see when concrete finishers 
they throw too much water on top of the when they're finishing the concrete and all of a sudden guess what they get a lot of dusting at you know that next day they'll see a bunch of uh um they'll come out to the job site and it actually looks like a bunch of white um dust which is actually calcium hydroxide kind of on the top of the concrete and it just looks like you know like powder or dust or something um, this shouldn't be confused with efflorescence, which is actually salts. Anyways, we'll talk about that in troubleshooting concrete. But moving on, is one gallon of water really worth it whenever you, whenever you talk about, yeah, you may get a one inch slump increase, but there's all these different things that are negatives. And so what I would say whenever you do the job addition you can see me over here dragging concrete with a chute and this is a horrible mix we ordered a five inch slump for a floor slab and guess what it came out at a zero it's bone dry and as you can see from my little cartoon there it says i am not dragging that so what do you do contractor what do you do concrete finisher whenever you can't drag and finish that concrete well you're either going to add more water you're going to hope, you know, maybe they have on site, they have an add mixture you can, you know, water reducer you can add. Or just maybe you might reject that concrete. You said, hey, this isn't what I ordered. It's important to realize, you know, what the water cement ratio is. Because a lot of times concrete producers are worried that they're going to, you know, deliver something that's too wet to you. So they try to trim out some water. Well, problem is, is nobody ever communicates how much water is actually trimmed out. And what I'm referring to is, say you have 250 pounds of water that's supposed to be in the mix, but they only batch, let's say, 110 pounds. So there's 40 gallons of water they didn't add per yard to that mix. And I'm, and I'm talking about, you know, after you moisture correct, after you make sure there's nothing left in the drum from the previous batch. I mean, you know, all those variables are, you know, are covered and they still trim out, you know, 40 gallons of water and they bring it to the job and, you know, it's bone dry. And you say, well, I either need to add 40 gallons just to, you know, because that's where the design is. That's or, you know, or what do I do? And so a contractor goes, well, I'm already supposed to have, you know, 40 gallons in it. So let's add 40 gallons or 30 gallons or 20 or whatever. Let's see what she looks like. So uh, that's real common, you know, say, hey, are we going to exceed our max water cement ratio? Where are we at? So um, it's a huge challenge. This whole scenario where you have the, the, the engineer saying, look, you can't exceed this water cement ratio. You have the contractor saying, look, I just want to place the concrete and for it to be good concrete. How do I get there? Then you have the producer saying, look, I don't want my concrete rejected because um, it exceeded the water cement ratio because too much water was added to the mix. So I would highly suggest contractor, um, truck driver that's for the producer to talk and make sure you get the right slump. All right. So moving on, so what about the quality of water? We talked about water cement ratio, we talked about water addition at the job, but what do we do about this whole water thing? What's going on with water? Well, pretty much a good rule of thumb is if you can drink the water, if you would drink it, it's probably going to be just fine to be used in concrete. You know, most most manipul uh, municipalities, most city water, they're going to be at a very much higher level of quality than, than, than what's needed for concrete. So you don't need as good of a quality level for concrete, uh, but since they're already meeting a certain quality level for health reasons because you're drinking the water in a public, uh, um, you know, public supply, they're at a very high level and so they're really cleaning it really well and so for concrete it doesn't you know necessarily need to be that cleaned um, so like reclaimed water 
where you know there's lots of water from a washout of a ready mix trick like you see here and you can actually this is just kind of an end one illustration but in essence you can take from your ready mix truck and you have all this washout water when you're trying to clean out the drum real well um, once it gets back to the um, batch plant and you know you need to wash it all out because you just got done delivering concrete make sure you get it all before the concrete gets too hard and what happens how much that water you know bunch of it gets dumped out well over time people said you know what if we go and we have sediment tanks or you know or uh, washout pits then we can go and maybe actually reuse a lot of that water and our elect our water bill will be a lot cheaper so what they can do is they can put it in this pits wash it out like you see here put them in pits and then you can have different um, in essence sediment pond where it kind of filters out most of the dirtiness most and then eventually it gets to a point where it becomes a little bit more clear a little cleaner there's not you know all the the dust and the rock and the dirt and everything else that's in the water and it gets to a good spot where you can actually take a pump and you can pump it back into a water storage and so reclaimed water needs to be tested depending on you know what you're doing and add mixtures and other stuff that's being added to the to it you know it's, it's always good to test that water um, can you know consistently to make sure that everything's nice and clean and there's no problems with it so well water if you don't have if you're out in the in the out in you know where you don't have city water or something like that and you're drilling a hole down into the ground well that well water you know you might be hitting an aquifer or something and so you never know what all's in that aquifer in that ground so you may need to test it you may need to test you know if you're gonna use a pond or a lake or something you may need to test that you know pond or lake water a lot of city uh, city places in the Midwest a lot of city water has a lake or a pond that it uh, uses at its water source they obviously test it quite a bit so why wouldn't you if you're not you know if it's the city's not going to test it for you then you probably need to also seawater isn't used as much because the chlorides but if you are going to use it you need to test it you know make sure you don't have those chlorides wastewater believe it or not sewage water in some cases you know may want to be used Kind of stinky sometimes, but you know, um, I've 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 been on a couple jobs with with wastewater, and I would not recommend it. It smelled absolutely horrible. But you know, if you're trying to save a dollar or however many, then uh, you may want to use it. But it, you know, on that just be aware it it, it might have a pretty nasty stench to it, um, even if it does tested and there's no problems it comes back with so um, questionable water if you don't know if you think something might be questionable then probably get it tested anyways you should never have a question in your head if you have good quality materials when you're using them in concrete so a good way to know though is if it's discolored if you don't want to drink it you know if it tastes kinda weird smells kinda weird um, there's no, you know, known issues with that. Sulfates is another big one. You don't want internal sulfate attack because your water. So try not to have too much of that. You can look at the standard to to find that. So what causes, you know, what causes all these problems? Like I said, chloride, sulfates, alkalis, acids. Um, organics and organic salts oils and waste and sewage they can cause things you know I already talked about um, some of these uh, alkalis can sometimes mess with your, your uh, dosage 
of your admixture. You're going to cause a lot higher uh, requirements with your admixtures, organics and inorganics and oils and waste and stuff can mess with the air content of your concrete. Kind of weird, so you just need to be careful about that. Um, ASTM C94, which is a standard for ready mix concrete, does provide some um, stuff for you know acceptance or criteria for questionable water. There is also a standard out there for ASTM, which uh, I think I have it in this in this uh, document. If I don't, we will go back and talk about it. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but there is a standard for water for ASTM C ninety four. You want at least you know. You don't want, because you're using this one water source compared to another, you don't want to have, you know, any more than really 10% strength difference at seven days. Um, and your setting times, kind of, this, you know, they talk about kind of the same thing. You don't want major changes in your setting time or strength gain. Um, they also have limits. And both of these standards for chlorides and sulfates and alkalis. And this is kind of the test if you ever need to look at it. So in essence, if you can drink it, you can probably use it. Some water is just not fit for drinking, but you know, it, it can be suitable for concrete. But you gotta test first. You know, always test any questionable water. Recycled water should be tested. Do not use seawater in reinforced concrete or pre-stressed concrete. You could probably use seawater if you don't have too high of sulfates. If it's just the chlor chlorides the issue, the chlorine, then uh, you might be able to use it in, uh, you know, plastic reinforced fibers or something like that. But if there's any type of steel, it'll it'll erode your steel or erode it all. So don't. Really